What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today, in the world of indie games, we're taking a look at one of my favorites, Armello. This game actually has kind of like a 2.0 update coming out very, very soon, and I'd love to invite you on over to check the game out. If you've never heard of it, Armello is a competitive tabletop game. If you've ever played anything like Runebound, or if you've ever played anything like Prophecy, or if you've ever really played any kind of adventure RPG tabletop board game, Armello is that in a digital form with fantastic visuals, amazing art. The production values in this game are just off the scales. Like, it's really, really, it's probably, honestly, one of the best digital board game conversions ever made. In a world where digital board game conversions tend to be sort of an afterthought, Armello tries really, really hard. And it's hard not to notice how hard the game is trying to give you a very streamlined, wonderful presentation and production. And so anyways, if you've never played Armello before, it's a board game. If you don't like board games, I can virtually guarantee you you're not going to like Armello. Although there are some RPG mechanics in there, some character building. Your average game of Armello is usually about 30 minutes to an hour long. Uh, you can play against other players or you can play in single player. We'll be doing single player today just because I can't predict in multiplayer how long people's turns are going to take and whether or not people are going to drop out or finish the game or matchmaking or anything else like that. So instead, today is just going to be kind of an introduction to the game via single player. We'll start a new game off. Uh, that's fine. You can cancel my other game. There's a whole bunch of characters that we can pick from. The, ca the characters are divided up into clans by animal. Uh, there's the wolf clan, which is these guys right here. So in the wolf clan, you've got Thane, you've got River, you've got Magna, and I believe you've got Fang. Uh, they tend to be some of the best warriors in the game. If you're trying to play a very fighty, very PvP-laden game, uh, they're a good clan to choose. You pick one character from the clan. They've all got their own ability that affects varying aspects of their gameplay. Uh, there's the Rat Clan. Rat Clan, they tend to be okay at combat, but they tend to be really, really good at thinking and being smart and sort of sneaking and doing rat-like things. In the Rat Clan, you've got Mercurio, you've got Zosha, and you've got Sargon. I think there's no other rats. I think those are the main ones in the Rat Clan, although I might be missing somebody. Oh, Griot. That's right, there's Griot as well in the Rat Clan. Uh, they have one caster and three characters that are kind of midway between, like, rogue and warrior. Uh, there's also the rabbit clan. Rabbit clan is kind of the most diverse. They have a whole bunch of random stuff you can do. Amber is kind of like a mage smarts hybrid. Uh, Barnaby has a little bit of fighting stats, a little bit of career. I'm sorry, a little bit of toughness, a little bit of smarts, but really not that great at casting. You've got the Elysia. Elysia? I don't know how to say her name. Uh, Alicia appears to be very, very good at thinking and doing smart things. And then you've also got Hargrave, who's got a cannon on a stick. I respect that. Cannon on a stick. Aside from that, you've also got the Bear Clan, which has kind of a bunch of hybrid caster-type characters. Characters that take very well to spirituality and casting, but also a few in there that are pretty good at fighting as well. I'm not a huge caster guy. We are going to play a random character this time around when we play the game. I can win pretty much every time if I'm playing like a fighty character against the AI. If I'm playing a roguey character, I can win most of the time. Mages are kind of like a blind spot in my plays. I don't really tend to do very well with mages. But if we get a mage, we'll try it. And then also, they've expanded the game out, and there's now the Bandit Clan, which you've got like this little squirrel robber right here with her acorn sword. You've got an otter with a spear, the Fisher of Souls. Uh, we also have Scarlet, who's a revolutionary fox. And then we have Horus, who is a badger knight. I don't know if he's supposed to be a badger or if he's supposed to be a wolverine. I think he's a badger. I don't know. What's the difference between a badger and a wolverine? The size of them? I don't really know the difference between those two animals, in all fairness. It's not something that I've really looked into. Either way, though, we're going to pick a character. I will more than likely go with a random character just to make this more interesting. And then you can pick your dice over here just in case there was a certain type of die that you wanted to use. I prefer the red and gold or the blue and gold, but the green and gold and the black and gold are cool too. They all look pretty sweet. You can buy, you know, other things to make your game cooler on their little cash shop if you want. You unlock these dice as you play the game, but if you wanted to buy it, they have like really special dice and like alternate outfits for the characters and stuff like that that you can purchase on their cash shop to bring in like extra money to keep the game in development. Let's see what we get. Oh. Anyways, let's give it a go and we'll see what we get here. 
Uh, we've gotten River. That's actually Avic's favorite character, as I recall. River's pretty good. Uh, so River, she has four fight. Not that great, so she gets four dice whenever she fights somebody. She's got five body, which means she has five HP. She has four wits, which means when she's trying to solve a challenge, she gets four dice. And she's got three spirit, which means that when she's casting a spell, or when she's trying to counter a spell, she gets three dice. Not that great. we got to pick a ring to go on our character. We can go with Sapphire, which gives stealth on mountains, day and night. That means that as long as we're on a mountain, other characters can't target us with special effects and they can't see us. Uh, we can get plus two magic every time we kill somebody if we have the Moonstone. That's not terrible for a caster character. Uh, we can have plus three fight if we have three or less health. That's probably my favorite ring in the entire game uh, because it basically turns you into an... If you have good gear already, this will turn you into an unkillable juggernaut with like 15 dice that like nobody wants to mess with as soon as your health starts to get low. And then we've got the Chrysachula, Chrysacola. Grant Scout on heroes with three health or less. That means we can see them no matter what they do and no matter where they are on the map. And we can see what their objective is and we can see what their quest is and stuff like that. It's nice if you're playing against other players because you can set up booby traps, but the AI kind of plays unpredictably sometimes. And so I don't find it to be that useful against the AI. Our special ability is called Huntress. River will shoot her bow for one damage before she starts a fight. If her target is killed, she stays her ground, but you still lose the AP. And so she's basically like a ranged character. I've actually never played with River before, so this should be an interesting playthrough. Now, we also need to choose a amulet. Now, amulets, they have a variety of different effects, but there is one amulet that goes along with every single stat that will give you plus one points to that stat before you start the game. It's up to you what you want to take. Personally, I like to start the game with five fight or five wits, no matter what I'm playing. Uh, wits is the amount of cards you can keep in your hand for like playing tricks on your opponent and kind of like reshuffling the way the game is going. So having a thick hand is a really, really good idea when you play this game. It never hurts to have hand variety. So I prefer to keep my wits around five because you can have one card in your hand per point of wits. Uh, fight is also useful because this character is a fighty character and we've already got kind of a fighty build going on. If you don't want to take stats, there are other things like the Amulet of Favor. You'll start with two prestige and you can never go below that. That can actually win you games, oddly enough. Uh, this Amulet can be a strange trump card. Prestige is how you win the game. At the end of the so there's a couple ways to win the game and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But one of the main ways to win the game is to have the most prestige at the end of like 16-ish turns. Uh, we also have Listener, receive a bonus star after a multiplayer match. I don't know what that does. I don't really play multiplayer too much. End your turn with one or more unused action points to gain plus one on the next turn. That's not bad if you like to store up your points for later or if due to bad luck you've got to stop a turn before you used up all your AP. And then we've got Intimidate, end your turn next to an enemy, and they will suffer minus two dice in battle until the end of their next turn, or the end of next turn. And other than that, I haven't unlocked a lot of the other ones. Each one of these has achievements that are kind of assigned to it, and they're not too hard. It's stuff like, you know, win three games as a Wolf Clan member, win three games as a Brigand Clan uh, member, stuff like that, and you'll unlock these amulets along the way. The ones that I've unlocked is Favor, Listener, Sprint, and intimidate you start with all the stat related ones oh also spoil start with two rot you will be affected to suffer minus one health every dawn so rot is kind of special we'll talk about that a little bit later as well this game does have some explanation that's going to go into it so i apologize if this episode seems a little bit slow and that i'm talking a lot but it's because when you're learning to play a board game oftentimes there's a lot of things that you need to explain to somebody and so i'll probably just go with the safe choice I'll probably go with an extra point of fight. An extra point of fight is never a terrible idea. It helps everybody. Nobody does worse with an extra point of fight. And so I think it's probably one of the better stats, especially considering how aggressively the AI tends to play sometimes. You are going to end up in fisticuffs, so you might as well have an extra dice. Let's go! From the wolf to the bear, the clans declare the time has come to take the throne. For rot's creeping, it twists our king. Heroes rise and save our mellow. Our mellow will always be mine. There you go. That's the king. Uh, we're going to have the first turn out here because we are a player. And the first thing you got to do is select a quest. 
Quests in this game are how you upgrade your character. I think you get a total of four quests. I might be quoting that wrong. It might be five. But basically, so there's a couple different ways to win the game, and quests play into that. So for any quest that you complete, they're going to mark a spot on the map when we take this quest. We're going to go there, and we're just going to get these rewards for making it to that part of the map without dying or without getting our ass kicked. You can do it at any time. There's no expiration date. And so right now it's giving us a choice between wits, between fight, and between spirit. Spirit is not going to factor in to our gameplay strategy very, very heavily. And so I'm going to probably not do Spirit. In addition to that, there's also bonus awards you can get at the top of the card. This one right here awards you a follower. This one right here gives you a Spirit Stone. And this one right here will give you a treasure. That's if you decide, so when you arrive at your quest, you'll have a choice. You can either just take this reward right here, or you can roll the dice for the corresponding stat. And if you win, you'll get the bonus treasure. And if you lose, you'll lose some health or you'll like lose a turn or you'll get like teleported halfway across the map. Just other random negative stuff happens. Uh, the spirit stone is important for one type of victory. So there's a couple different ways to win the game. Our mellow is roughly 16 turns or eight days. A day is divided up into two turns apiece, one during the day, one during the night. Uh, every single morning, the king will lose one health because he's infected and he's going crazy. And when the king runs out of health and dies, the person with the most prestige wins. Alternatively, you can collect, I think, five or four or a number, anyways, of spirit stones. I think it's four. You collect four spirit stones. If you can get inside the castle with four spirit stones, you can purify the king, which will then make you the winner. And you'll cleanse his rot and he'll lose his madness and he'll go back to being a good, kind leader. Uh, the other way that you can win the game is by killing the king, which is honestly sort of a last-ditch effort. You don't really... So, killing the king, the fastest I've ever done it is like 10 or 11 turns. But, that being said, killing the king can be an effective way to end the game now in your favor if other people are beating you at, like, completing quests or somebody's getting kind of close to getting all the runestones. Like, yeah, killing the king, you may want to just bum-rush him and try to do it. But anyways, usually the game ends when the king dies and whoever has the most prestige wins. But if you're playing a particular game, especially in multiplayer where everybody has a strategy that they're working towards and they're all familiar with the game, chances are the king's either going to get killed or purified. You just kind of got to play it out and see what happens. I'm going to increase my fight, I think, to six. Because that'll make us very, very formidable in combat. Six is no joke. Now, every single turn, you're going to get three AP, and you can move around the map with that AP. Uh, forests don't cost extra or anything else like that. There's a couple of locations you can stop at along the way. There's ruins. When you go into ruins, you roll dice to see what happens, and sometimes you get treasures. Sometimes you get followers. Sometimes you spawn a giant demon, and you got to fight it. Sometimes you get a bad follower. Just all kinds of random stuff happens when you go in dungeons. Usually, you make money, though, which is down here in the bottom right of the screen. Uh, right here, this is the Standing Stones. If you go to a stone circle, you will get one health back every single time you come over here. But if somebody has four rune stones, these become purified territory, and anybody that is corrupted that steps inside of there is going to get their face owned off. So these turn into, like, deadly landmines later on in the game. But in the early game, they're basically healing points. In the late game, they're healing points for good characters and basically murder zones for bad characters. Just kind of depends what you're trying to do. Uh, we have a couple of other stats down here at the bottom right that I should probably talk about before we go much further. Uh, we've got money. We spend that on coins to equip things and stuff like that and to play tricks on other people and hire mercenaries and stuff like that. Or uh, we can also use mana, which is the one right next to it, or magic to cast spells. Green cards are spells, yellow cards are gear, and red cards are tricks. Uh, so tricks do all kinds of random things. Magic spells do what you think they would do. All kinds of magical stuff. And gear goes onto your character. So for right now, we've got the Reliable Short Sword. In battle, plus one explode pool and first burned miss explodes. Okay. It's free. I mean, it's not the most useful item, but it's a level one item, so I'll take it. Uh, we need to get up to there, and we can pretty much almost do that on our first turn. So that's what I'm going to do. That's the King's Guards. Uh, they aren't hostile right now, but if you get a bounty on your head or during certain world events, 
they will become hostile and they'll start hunting the heroes. But for right now, they're friendly, so you don't have to worry about those unless you attack them first. Killing a King's Guard, you get minus one to your prestige, so maybe don't do that. Uh, he's kind of moved over to there, and he's captured two cities. Cities will generate a gold every single morning that they're inside your control. Swamps drain your health by minus one if you step on them. Uh, she's gone to a dungeon, and she's pulled four gold out of it. She's also gone to there and tried to solve a challenge, but failed, and taken minus one HP's worth of damage. It's nighttime now. He's gained one corruption. He's put a booby trap on that forest over there and a spirit stone has spawned inside of that stone circle. We may want to go after that as a backup plan. She's been attacked by a giant zombie monster and run out of her territory, so that's good for us. At the beginning of every turn, you get to draw cards equal to the amount of your wits in your hand. So we have three in our hand right now. We have four wits, which means we can draw one card. I'm going to go with gear for right now. We've got the wild weed, which is a healing item. Not inherently that useful, but I'll take it. Uh, let's go do our quest. We're going to take damage from being in the swamp. You can't tell what smells worse in the breathless bogs, the mud or the troll. The creature's asleep, half covered in filthy water. So we can gamble right here to get a spirit stone. We've got a 50% chance. Uh, it's even right now. So for every point of fight that you have, you'll get plus 10% chance to succeed. So if we had 7, we would have a 70% chance to succeed. Uh, we can gamble it out. It's early on in the game, so dying right now doesn't really matter. And if we actually get the Spirit Stone early, that gives us a pretty good chance at winning. And so there we go. You wake the troll with a shout, then leap forward and attack. The fight is fierce, but you emerge victorious and claim the beast's Spirit Stone. Nice. So we've got our first Spirit Stone. I'm also going to use my other AP to go back and get this one. So we're already halfway to a Spirit Stone victory. We've been very, very lucky so far. In addition, we needed to heal that damage that we took from stepping on the bog, so that was a pretty productive turn, if I say so myself. Uh, we can... That costs four. At the next dusk or dawn, a merchant arrives with a choice of two treasures. But if I have to buy that, I only have four gold right now, so that's kind of expensive. That gets rid of minus one rot and cures our poison. I'm going to play that just to get it out of my hand. I'm going to play that just to get it out of my hand because I want to draw some more gear. We're building a fighty character right now, so I want to have a lot more weapons and armor and stuff like that. We've got to select our quest. He's gone to the Spirit Stones. Uh, she's drawn two cards and then gone into a dungeon to adventure. She's drawn magic from the well, and now she's trying to resolve a challenge in the forest but failed and was killed in the attempt, so she's going to lose one prestige. Fantastic. Uh, we've also been hit with a fireball spell right there by some douche nozzle from across the map. I don't know why they shot me. That's given us nine fight, though, which makes us pretty good at kicking ass and taking names for right now. So I may leave it as it is. Uh, the prestige leader at the moment is the badger. And so, and so at the beginning of every day, the prestige leader gets to choose a law that the king enacts that kind of changes how the game goes. Uh, everybody loses two gold, and if they can't pay that, they lose a prestige. Lame. Lame! Thanks for that, Badger. I appreciate it, dude. I'm about to go mushroom mushroom on you, bro. If you rub me the wrong way, we might even go snake! Oh yeah, we gotta pick a quest. So we've got a quest for wits, and we've got a quest for spirit, or we've got a quest for health. I'm gonna go for the quest for spirit. Which is all the way over on that mountain, all the way across the map. Fantastic. Hey, we got a halberd, so that's good. In battle, you get plus one dice, and your opponent loses a dice. I can live with that. In addition, I'm kind of going to heal myself with that, because there's no... Don't hold on to things in this game, trust me. I'm going to claim this city so that in the morning I'll get a gold, unless she comes back and claims it. And then we'll kind of just, like, chillax right here for a little bit. We'll see how things play out, but I'm pretty happy with how our character's developing already. Uh, if we start to have, like, a glut of cash... He tried to, apparently, defeat a forest of thorns and failed. Lost an HP. She is trucking on over to there, where she's trying to dive into a dungeon, and she's made of gold. Zosha has come back and has claimed that city like an asshole. And now she's attacking us. So, battle. Battle in this game is pretty simple. Um, I'm going to do my best to explain it, but we are on a time limit, so I have to do my turn, like, at a certain speed. Basically, we roll our dice... 
And we'll talk about the results in just a minute. So, swords are attack, shields are defense, trees are exploding dice that count as attacks and also get re-rolled, and then that's pretty much it. Suns and moons will give you an attack if... Wow, she got, like, a really good roll. I think the AI cheats its rolls, I'll be honest with you. I've played against the AI a lot, and the amount of times the AI has had, like, three dice and somehow magically exploded their way to a victory against me, even though I had 11 dice, it happens a lot. I don't trust the AI. Maybe I'm committing the gambler's fallacy. Maybe I'm just being a poor loser. But the AI seems to roll absurdly well a lot of the time. Like, they'll have, like, four dice, and somehow they'll get, like, four damage and four defense. Which is, like, not... It, it's not possible if you look at the chances of that happening. But they seem to do it pretty frequently, so... No question for me. I definitely don't want that item, and I definitely don't want that item. Both of those suck. We don't have any money, so I can't really, like, heal myself or anything right now. Um... Shit. That's kind of a precarious position, ain't it? Well, I'm going to try and solve this peril down here. So when we roll this, we need a sun, we need a sword, and we need a shield. I am going to burn that for a shield and just hope for the best. It teleports us to the forest dungeon, though, if we mess this up. And mess this up, indeed, we did. We had a couple of exploding dice right there, but we didn't hit any of them. So maybe it'll teleport me to the other side of the map. I mean, that kind of helped, I'll be honest, but then it spawned a demon on us, too, when it did it, so... That's unfortunate. We may die here. We have two AP left, so I'm gonna come claim this village. And then, in the morning, we should get paid just one gold for having the village. I want to play that wild sap, but I'm too poor to do so. I want that card out of my inventory, too. But that's pretty much the breadth of our turn for right now. He may attack us, he may not. Different characters play more or less aggressively depending on the AI for that character. It's kind of like playing Civ. Some characters are very likely to attack you. Some characters are going to avoid you the entire game and just not bother. Exile to the nearest mountain. Man, the AI's picking on us right now. The AI's picking on us hard. So we've been teleported to the nearest mountain. Oh, that helped us out though. Nice. <laughs> Dumbass. That's what you get. That's what you get. I'm going to grab this spirit stone, and then I'm going to grab that quest. And uh, they just basically put us a very long way towards winning the game. Nice job, genius. All right. I'm, I'm a little chuffed right now. I'm a little excited about what the AI just did. That was a really, really dumb move. All heroes gain stealth until next dawn or until they are spotted. It's problematic. I'm not going to lie to you. That's problematic. Um, when people are stealth, I have this tendency to walk into them on accident without meaning to. Well, at least he slew the demon that was right there. Hey, there we go. That'll work. Shining steel sword. I can barely afford it. Nice. Let's go grab this spirit stone since that moves us towards a win. We've got three out of the four spirit stones that we need on, like, turn four in order to win the game. And that has me very, very pleased. I will more than likely stay on the mountain right here and see what the AI does. We get a free shield if somebody attacks us while we're on the mountain. And so this is kind of a safe place to be in case this person tries to attack us. We've also gotten one of our HPs back along the way. Hey, what's the AI doing? Pan my camera. What's he doing? Oh, he's got stealth. I wouldn't be able to see it anyways. Never mind. Back to our turn. A number of things moved around, but I can't tell you... Ooh, that's a really good card. Throwing Axe is great for eliminating people that are on low health that you just kind of want to mess with. I'm going to go get our quest now. The Hermit. It's not long before you notice a strange shadow beyond the Veil of Snow. It may be Vecchius, but it could just as well be the Mountain Troll. Uh, we can get Bane's Claw while we're over here. In Battle and Perils, you get plus two to your Explode Pool. So your explode pool, every time you roll a tree, that's a dice that counts as an attack and then gets re-rolled. Uh, every time you re-roll one of those, it subtracts from your explode pool. So you can only, like, chain trees so many times before you run out of explode pool. This makes your explode pool quite a bit better, but we don't really have a great chance of getting it. But it is a really good item, so I would consider it. 
Like, if you've got a big dice pool, that's an item that can kind of change the game for you. Oh, so close. All right, so we took a damage, but we still get the wits, so that's okay. And then I guess we're just going to hang out on our mountain for right now. Nothing else for us to do. It's not showing me the other guy's turn, so let's just pick a new quest. I'm going to go for more fight, because that gives us another stone and will basically win the game for us. And so my goal for right now is to suicide over here somewhere so that I die. It'll teleport me across the map, and then I can go pick up that spirit stone. From there, we're going to focus on quests, because if you finish all of your quests, it will give you free access to the king so that you can purify him. Otherwise, you've got to solve a really complicated challenge in order to get in the front door. And with five wits dice, I don't think we're going to be able to do it without a lot of luck. And I find that the best results in this game come from not relying on luck and relying on your best chances. Go for the sure thing. Don't... Oh, we're the prestige leader. We get to pick the law. Yay! Ah, I am... Oh, never mind. It gave it to him. What a dick. The king orders his guard to march to the nearest settlement and terrorize it. So they're going to go burn down all these cities. Which means that it basically, it'll negate the money that any player is getting from that city until they come back and they put their flag back on it. It's okay. None of these were my territory, so I don't really care. The next battle, until the end of the turn, all swords gain poison. Poison's pretty good. I like poison. That girl is poison. Now, I would suicide against these Bane, except that if the Bane kill me, I gain Corruption. Corruption is kind of an interesting stat. It's called Rot. Uh, there is a Rot victory that you can perform, that if your Rot gets up to, like, critical levels, you become basically the Harbinger of Darkness, the sort of Arthas of the map that overthrows the king and ushers in a new era of evil. I've never done that victory. But anyways, anytime you have Corruption... If you fight another character who has corruption, the person with higher corruption gets the lower person's corruption score as bonus dice to sort of imply that you're like the big bad king of evil and they're sort of your minion uh, fighting against you. The most evil person wins, basically. I'm going to go ahead and adventure here for a second. Hey, we got a treasure. That's pretty cool. The Reaper's Trident. In battle, minus two dice and plus three swords with poison. So we get three attacks automatically at the beginning of every combat in exchange for two dice and it will give us two corruptions so that's an evil weapon that's been corrupted I guess I'll come down I'll work my way over here I guess I don't know let's fight this Bane whatever so there's the one damage we'll fight this Bane and if we end up getting corruption we'll go ahead and put this on us um, because there won't be any downside to doing it but for right now, we'll try to keep ourselves pure. I doubt that we'll lose this fight. So we've already got some trees on the field. Uh, we rolled pretty well, in all honesty. We rolled pretty well. Four defense and nine attack. So there you go. We whooped the hell out of that dude and blocked all of his attacks. So that means we just get bonus prestige, which is nice. I like bonus prestige. So we are now the prestige leader, unless... Uh, the Badger guy does something on his turn that negates that. Next turn, we'll hit this, then we'll go down to here. Uh, if this guy attacks us on our next turn, I'm okay with that. doesn't really bother me. But we're out of time for right now. This is Armello. I'll probably finish this game off in another episode, but thank you for joining me. If you like the game, get it down below. The game is scheduled to have some major content releases this year. Uh, they're turning it into Armello 2.0 very, very soon. And so I think the game is worth a visit right now. And if you're a board game fan, I think you'll enjoy it very, very much. Uh, the game is down below. If you like the video, don't forget to leave a like on it. Hi, do. Take care, everybody.